Earl girls, welcome back to another episode of Hot Mess with Alex Earl. Today we're back with my friend Hannah. Hey. I haven't seen her in a minute, so we wanted to really debrief with you guys. I've been going through my DMs and you guys need a lot of help when it comes to guys. And <laughs> I'm not really sure, like, I think we give pretty good advice. I think, but <laughs> that's up for debate for sure. <laughs> depending but on who you Hannah ask. Hannah and I <laughs> definitely have similar takes when it comes to guys and like a similar mindset, and we always have, even since like freshman year of college. I mean, we've like gone on double dates together. Hannah's gotten me ready for dates. We have a lot of stories and a lot of advice, and you guys need a lot of help. <laughs> so we're gonna go over all of that today. Welcome back, Hannah. Happy Thanks. to have you here. I'm so happy to be here. I miss you guys, and I'm excited to get into this with you. <laughs> I guess first, I haven't seen you in like forever because I went home manically I know, for like a month. I haven't, <laughs> so. I haven't seen you. Where have you been? I've been MIA from the MIA. And Hannah's from Connecticut. Yeah, so I was up north. It was freezing and cold, but my grandparents from England were there, so I spent as much time as I could, and now I'm back, finally. Okay, family core. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and... Um, I, we haven't seen each other for a long time, so I guess we have a lot to catch up on. How was your New Year's? Don't even get me started on New Year's. I'm still triggered by the topic. So I went to Providence because my boyfriend's from Newport, and we went into the city for New Year's. And we were supposed to go to like a cute little bar, have a cute little moment. Like his friends were coming with us. We had like our rides, tequila shots in the car. I was like on a high. Um, Starting 2024. Yeah. 2024. 2024. I'll forget that. But we get to Providence and it's like actually dealing with like our friend group. Like no one was making a decision. (laughs) Everyone was like, should we go here or here? I'm like, aren't boys like straightforward and to the point? Like what's going on here? So we're doing laps. (laughs) around Providence and I'm like can oh, I'm so over it at this point and finally my car makes a stop and we see this bar we run over and the bouncer's like oh sorry we're at capacity and that was at 11:58. so my New Year's kiss my start to 2024 was in a gray and empty parking lot in Providence Rhode Island <laughs> so no. yep um no. I, I hope that doesn't foreshadow what this year is bringing for me but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, darkness it's dark and it's scary and um, that's okay yeah. no it was fine I mean, I mean you can only really go up from there hopefully exactly like I started off at rock bottom and we're going up there we so. go and I yours was the complete opposite could not be farther we were, we from a were Providence in the parking club lot. with Nicki Minaj <laughs> and she was the best like I'm just so obsessed with Nicki Minaj you know this and she killed it but I didn't have a New Year's kiss because Braxton couldn't come yeah so I, I just mean you were with all the girls yeah we, yes. were, we had a girl night so Aww. it was fine I mean me as a barb and also at this point have been home for so long missing my friends the pain I felt standing in that parking lot and clicking through Snapchat and reading the group chat, I was in pain. Well, like, we're happy physical. that you're back. Yes. 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 She's back. Update on the 30 hard. Hannah's doing it with me. Which is so unlike me. This like, is so unlike I, Hannah. When I told <laughs> my parents that I was doing it, they literally looked at me with blank stares and they're like, I mean, we're so happy, but, but <laughs> we're <what>? ecstatic. <laughs> I feel like I need to learn to be healthier. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we've just been sober this month. And I will say the first week was very, very like I was like, I'm not doing this. This is not happening. My body was so sore because you're like doing physical activity twice a day, which is a lot. There was one day where it was snowing and I was like, you will not catch me dead outside walking around. So I literally did laps around my kitchen counter for 45 minutes. And I was like, if anyone's peering into my house right now, I would look like a glitch. Saturday night, I didn't get my outdoor workout in. Mm -hmm. And I was like, guys, I have to go for a walk, but it's like 10 p.m. at night. Like, in Miami like that's definitely really dangerous to do so I went to Anna and Brooke's place and we Mm -hmm. went to their pool 
and we they had glasses of wine in the pool like normal people mm-hmm. we were up there for like two hours you were there like my, I, I was running in the pool I did sprints because oh I can't swim yeah like, one thing about me is I cannot swim yeah like I know you used to be a swimmer so you don't relate but like I just can't the I don't know how like I drown myself if I yeah. try to swim like I can doggy paddle and that's about it but I was just running laps in the pool, and it was actually a pretty good workout. But Aww. I ended up You're like a little aerobic scraping grandma. off all my toenail polish. <laughs> it's all dissipated Were now. Were you running on like the tops of your toes? Like I guess so. <laughs> I guess my toes were like a little mangled under there, like, like a little grime on the surface of the pool. <laughs> Well, because it's slippery i was trying to like grip down yeah. on the pool because like you're trying to run you fall that's probably why people swim in the pool and not run yeah. but oh my god it was fine honestly like appreciate the dedication there so. yeah i got i got my outdoor workout in yeah. while they sat there and listened to music and had wine i'm loving the 30 hard though it's, very- it's so much fun i swear <laughs> and this weekend i'm going to the kansas city chiefs game well I keep going at the Kansas City Chiefs game, but I'm going for the Dolphins. Yes. The Dolphins versus the Chiefs game, and it's in Kansas City, which is going to be zero, negative zero degrees. And you will have no liquid blanket. And that's what I'm saying is like, how did I not plan for this when I'm thinking of dry January? Like, all I want to do is go to this football game. We literally have like a sick setup. We're flying there on a plane with Braxton's friends, oh my God, that's landing, so going to the game and getting right back on the plane and going home. And I'm like, that would be the perfect ideal situation to get hammered. Yeah. Wow. And I'm going to be sleep on the plane. And I'm going to be with people I don't really know. And I'm going to be with all the dolphins, wives and girlfriends. And I'm going to be sober as a brick. I'm literally going to shoot myself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> can you make exceptions? Because, oh my that's God. What I'm like, like if, <laughs> If I hadn't been posting on social media about this... No, now this, you can't. Of course I would make an exception. Of course I'd be like, well, this is one night out of 30 days I can have a drink. But, like, I'm afraid that people would literally come from an there, egg. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> there would be knocks on your door with pitchforks. <laughs> like, flame. <laughs> like, actually. So I guess I can't drink. Thanks a lot, guys. There are girls relying on you now, so... Um, yeah. So if you're in it with us and you're also like really just wanting to have a drink this month, you can't. <laughs> you fucking Sorry. can't. Okay? No exceptions. If we can't, you can't. We're doing this together. Or you're a freak. <laughs> and um, oh, out on our list for 2024 is recycling guys. Now yes. to give context here, Hannah and I both have boyfriends, mm-hmm. but a lot of you guys need a lot of help. Like I, I'm reading my DMs <laughs> and a lot of the what would Alex do questions. And I'm like, we need to sit down and have like a therapy session. I feel like for us, we used mm-hmm. to sit down and listen to like call her daddy. Yes. Freshman year oh my of God, college. That used and we to be were like, my Bible. Bible. Yeah. <laughs> Bible. 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 <laughs> um, so we're going to try and give you guys some like dating advice, first dates, what to do when you're going on a first date, how to talk to a guy are you going on a date or are you just there to hook up with him? So we're oh going to go over all of this. Are you just a whole? <laughs> oh, <your> daddy. <laughs> um, this is very full circle right now. <laughs> it is. So wait, I feel like have we told this before, but Hannah and I wanted to start a podcast freshman yes. year. We wanted to call it the morning after mm-hmm. and we never did it. But now here we are. And it was before podcasting was cool. So yeah. If you ever doubt Alex's place in this, she <laughs> it has been a dream since the beginning. Out for 2024, my whole point. Wait, back to what we're talking about. <laughs> New boys are in recycling old boys, recycling exes, hookup situationships is out. I feel like a very common theme with girls and... I feel like it's just feeling like comfortable and you want to like go back to a guy either that like you used to date, you used to hang out with, whatever it is, an ex-boyfriend. I mean, it never, uh, in my opinion, I don't think it ever turns out as good as you like hoped. Like you always think you're going to go back and it's just, it's still disappointing. Like if you left the first time, you should keep moving on. Mm -hmm. Like for example, I think this time last year, I like was in between. I wasn't with NFL man yet. I just had ended things with baseball boy. And I thought, reduce, reuse, recycle. (laughs) I hit up my ex-boyfriend and I went to hang out with him. And it was like talking to a wall. (laughs) 
<laughs> an actual I mean, brick. <laughs> the same problems that we used to have. And I was just yeah. like, oh my gosh, you, I mean, you always think it's going to be good because you think of the good things and you forget all the bad stuff. Yeah. And I mean, I hung out with him and immediately I was like, wait, why did I do this? And now I'm like embarrassed that I reached back out to him, like gave him some yeah. like confidence. I feel like it just always makes you feel worse in the end. Like yeah. there's no plus except no. like you boost their ego yeah. and so out for 2024 out. Out. out is going back to guys but now okay we're gonna go out with new guys we're gonna go out mm-hmm. on a date we're gonna hang out with someone but how um, do we do that alex <laughs> <laughs> and that's like a scary it's scary and it's like hard yeah. to find a guy to hang out with but I mean, our friends are really going through the ringer right now with like Mm -hmm. dating apps and meeting guys. And I feel like it's kind of funny to witness from like an outside. There's also like a level of excitement to that. I feel like reframing it and like seeing the excitement in it, like getting to have those girls nights where you fill everyone in on your like most recent date, who you're talking to, like as girls with boyfriends, that is so fun to hear about. It is. And it's all for the plot. It doesn't matter if it goes good, bad, Mm -hmm. indifferent. It's all for the plot. So it doesn't actually really matter. So just go on the date, get out there. But how do you like get to the date? Like how, how are you getting there? Are you reaching out to this guy first? Is he reaching out to you? Personally, I'm not really good with reaching out to guys first. Every time I've tried to slide into a guy's <laughs> DMs, holy shit, it comes back to just haunt me. Like there was this one guy in college, he was like an athlete and I DM'd him and he answered and for some reason I said like I really like your dance moves. <laughs> like what? Your dance moves? I, I about some video <laughs> of him dancing. Like I have no idea why I would say that and I mean, I think like end of high school, maybe COVID when I was really bored in the house and I DM'd everyone under the sun and they never saw it or reached out. Mm-hmm. And then I've had people like this past year DM me and it's <laughs> and my, it's, <laughs> and it's still there from like 2020 like. and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is just so haunting. So like personally, I like when a guy reaches out to me first, but I don't think that always has to be the case. Like I think at some point, like you have to like yeah. have some balls and get out there a little bit. I would say like, you don't have to DM a guy with some like crazy first line or like, I feel like the best way to do it is if there's someone like in your class or like that you've seen around, you can DM mm-hmm. them asking them a question. So you're just sort of like making that connection without having to be like, yeah. hey, like, yeah, I feel like in. it's always better to start off as friendly, friendly, not flirty. Not flirty. Yeah. Yes. Flirty always just goes. And then I don't know. I feel like if you're trying to actually like find a boyfriend, like that will also just put you in like a rabbit hole of mm-hmm. like making yourself just a hookup. Yes. Um, which I think we need to also differentiate for people the difference between you are hanging out with a guy Mm -hmm. and you are going on a date with a guy because I think that can be super confusing. Especially when you first get to college because like, I don't know about other colleges, but with UMiami, there wasn't really like a college town. So Mm -hmm. like going on dates, like wasn't the norm, I feel like. Yeah, and it's also not normal for a guy in college to really like be taking you out to like a big fancy dinner. Yeah, but there is a difference between him asking you to like, go to the dining hall together and him <laughs> inviting you to his dorm at like 1.30 in the morning. I think you need to like make sure that something's planned in advance and it, make sure it's something like other than sitting down and watching a movie because yes. that's not a date. No. That's, that's not. A- <laughs> that's foreplay. <laughs> okay, let's be fucking for real. <laughs> it's not a date. So um, I think it's just being self-aware, which is a big in for 2024 is being self-aware yes. here, girls. I mean, I'm working on it. We're mm-hmm. all working on it, but we have to be self-aware in these moments. And you have to like know, I don't know what a guy is kind of like treating you as. Yes. You might end up hurting yourself. But I feel like that's better than being Delulu and then letting (laughs) him hurt you instead of like doing it to yourself. And I think something else to note with that is deciding whether you like the guy or not. Mm -hmm. I feel like so many times I had to teach myself this is like sometimes I'll just be like hanging out with a guy and I'll be like, oh, I do like him. Like, yeah, I want to date him. But then like one or two months into the relationship, I'm like, wait, 
<laughs> I don't like talking to him. Yeah. I don't like hanging out with him. Like, I'm not even attracted to I him. I feel like a lot of it for <laughs> girls is like a game. You want to feel, because it is nice when someone like mm-hmm. likes you and you feel validated and you like want that validation, but that doesn't mean that like you like them. Like I think you have to like take a step back and be like, wait, do I even for one like this person? Mm-hmm. I feel like girls don't ask themselves that enough also. It's not like you can't be so butthurt when something doesn't come from like a date or if it's not forming into a relationship, but Mm -hmm. we're going to get there. But I feel like we need to like take it a step back and like go back to like the first date because so many of you guys ask me like, I'm going on a date. I'm nervous. What do I do? Personally, I think when I'm going on a first date, I just always try to trick myself into pretending like I'm best friends with this person Mm -hmm. already and being myself and like laughing and being outgoing But just not, like, I don't know, like, treating them as a friend. Yeah. I mean, I have a version of this. I mean, like, I'm pretty out there and, like, weird. (laughs) So I kind of like to let a guy know that on the first date. Yeah. So I get right into it. Like, I'm like, when's the last time you cried? Like, just (laughs) like, like, what's your deepest trauma in life? Like, I don't know. I don't care. And I just, like, straight up ask them. And honestly, like... A lot of guys have never been asked stuff like this before and they like mm-hmm. like sharing it. So yeah. first of all, you end up learning a lot about the guy, which can sometimes reveal huge red flags <laughs> and you can leave. Or like it's a really fun and interesting dinner conversation. Like, I don't know, just not beating around the bush, putting yourself out there. I also think something good to do on dates as well as that is guys love when you're interested in them i mean of course like (laughs) they they want to feel like gassed up and like yes i think asking questions to the little things they say you know like follow-up questions if they're talking Mm -hmm. about their family almost like act as if you're like their therapist but not really their therapist don't be like psychotic but Mm -hmm. act so interested if they're talking about like this new pair of sneakers that they got like this is you you're like wow, you're like, wow show me a picture like, <laughs> I need do to we know, care no i need like. to know all about these sneakers <laughs> um so just acting interested i think is like a big turn on for guys or a big like green flag in their eyes i think always being polite on a date like being polite to the staff um just show that you have manners like show you're not a bitch there's a lot of good. like <laughs> there's a lot of parallels of like stuff that you would want a guy to do on the first date like seem interested in you like again be polite to the wait staff like it doesn't just pertain to guys like mm-hmm. everything that you would want on a first date like be that person for yourself yeah or for the other person wow so, wow it was like really deep <laughs> really okay insightful. Anna <laughs> but I feel like also if you're feeling really nervous going into a first date the best thing ever is like getting ready with your friends mm-hmm. I think having a glass of wine, like them helping you do your There's makeup. nothing wrong with having a little drink before yep. your date. Unless you're doing 30 hard and then you can put it the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that that brings me back to freshman year, getting ready for dates. Um, this is a great example actually yeah. of a time where I was preparing as if I was going on (laughs) to the Met Gala (laughs) to the Met Gala because this football player asked me to hang out and oh my god we thought it was the coolest thing ever I think I did like take a shot before in the dorm actually 100% but Hannah came over to my dorm room I'm like you know what I'm so nervous right now I can't do this she's like no you're gonna look so good you're going I put on my green Lululemon (laughs) leggings because I was like, okay, Lululemon, like designer. And then (laughs) I put on this tie-dye t-shirt that was like cropped. So there was like an inch of stomach out. So it was like a little provocative. but so sweaty and hot. (laughs) I have this tie-dye shirt on and then I have... Also, tie-dye was the moment. Yeah, it was. It It was cool. (laughs) And I had these... um, sneakers they were white air forces but i bought them off ebay for like way too much money like i could have just done this myself with hot glue and some jewels but the check on the nike had like can see this outfit in my head they were high top air forces (laughs) with a bedazzled rose gold nike check and i thought i gave everything and more like i was like crazy over them eight and I mean, it was the coolest outfit we thought we ever seen. We have to, we definitely have pictures from this. Night. I need to go look and find because one you guys are gonna die. So it's burned into my skull. <laughs> I'm hanging out with this football player. I think that 
I'm the coolest girl in school right now, as if he's not hitting up like <laughs> everyone, <laughs> everyone in the else mom. with a pulse. <laughs> <laughs> everyone else with a pulse. So I'm getting ready for this. And this was the definition of we were going over to his place to watch a movie. I was not going on a date and I acted like I was. Um, he pulls up to campus to pick me up with <laughs> when I tell you he parked like all the way away from the freshman dorms like I had to trudge through the woods through the swimming pool across campus oh, he and was you like, had the biggest smile on your face <laughs> while you did I was like oh he just actually can't pull up to the dorms right now no sweetie oh, be self-aware he's trying yeah, to hide be you self-aware so if some guy is not like coming to pick you up at your place and like we'll come to the door and get you and if he's trying to hide you that's another really big red flag that I just did not care about in the moment I was like here I go and I think when I got to the car he was mm -hmm. slouched down like he had a seat reclined <laughs> all the way back like all the way back he was basically laying down horizontal and I get in he's oh like come God. on <laughs> he's like peering over the side <laughs> he's like come on close the door close the door I'm like oh I'm like I don't know like he's a football player like oh he's so he's rush famous. to get back with you <laughs> like we have to get in the car before the paparazzi get us so that was just uh, oh my god and you know what he said to me right when we got in the car he was like and I totally fell for this like an idiot he was like you have such pretty blue eyes like our kids would have like beautiful blue oh eyes oh my god and you came back and told us and none of us checked you not one of us we were all like I was like, yes! I was like wait I literally said hi to him and he wants to have kids with me so we we're like oh my god you guys are gonna date like yeah. get married when I tell yeah. you guys this night ended up going so horribly in a way that like oh, we're not course. even gonna get no. into um was not a date he did not like me I don't think he ever reached out to me again um that's okay we keep it moving. Do you think he still wants your kids? So, like, I think he's like married. <laughs> Is he actually? Yeah, I think so. Good for him. <laughs> well, watch out. He wants Alex Earl's kids, so <laughs> <laughs> he can't have them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's just a fun example of getting ready with your friends, and <laughs> even if they're preparing you for disaster, they're. Yes. Getting ready with your friends is always good, calms the nerves. Yeah, because then again, even if it goes to shit, like looking back years later, you still have that like fun memory of getting yeah. ready together. It's for the plot. Yeah. That's like another big thing. <laughs> another thing for 2024 is it's not that deep. Whatever it is, no. like just stop. It's not that deep. Like we got to move on. Even if you're talking about like a breakup, like getting past someone, like mm -hmm. it's not that deep. We got to keep going. Yeah. I think it's also like think about doing stuff to bring content to girls dinners like there should be a tax you have to do at least one adventurous funny crazy thing before you go to a dinner so like that could be your thing going on a first date talking to a new guy mm -hmm. and if it goes badly then the story is going to be funnier so yeah so don't be nervous and now after the first date this is where i feel like girls get a little crazy Ooh. You know who you are. I'm talking to you, sitting in your car right now, listening to this. You know, you go on a date with a guy, and all of a sudden you're like, when are you proposing? That's literally me, though. <laughs> <laughs> this is another time. I'm, like, I'm getting called out. <laughs> Rome wasn't built in a day, ladies. No. It's going to take more than a date for him to want to be your boyfriend. Maybe many dates, maybe many months, and maybe he still doesn't want to be your boyfriend. So, going I mean, this, we actually, this, like, connects to how my boyfriend and I started dating, and it's so wildly embarrassing, but um, I met him one time. We had one conversation, and he was rushing the frat that, I, that we really liked hanging out with, so I went up to the rush chair, and I was like, I have a crush on this kid, like, you have to let him into the frat because I want to see him again. And he was like, you have a crush on him? And I was like, yes, like a huge giant crush. And he went and told my now boyfriend that I had a crush on him after one conversation. And I saw him at this pregame and he came up to me and he was like, so I heard you have like a huge crush on me and I have never wanted to die more, like actually. So, I mean... That's kind of cute though. Yeah, no, it worked That's out That's a way best. where it's not but like But if it psycho. went badly... It went badly, I never would have recovered. Like, yeah. But, like, I don't know. Like, that's the thing with guys is I feel like they like little hints yes. of that you like them and that you're interested. Yeah. But you just can't suffocate them. Like, you yeah. cannot you cannot be triple texting them after no. a date. Like, 
let let them breathe like as much as you want your space like you need to let them breathe and Mm -hmm. I don't know I think texting guys for me I'm the driest texter in the entire world like even with (laughs) my boyfriend now he texted me like he's like I love you you look beautiful and I'm like you're like "Mm -hmm, (laughs) T.Y. T.Y. I don't know like for some reason like texts I don't I don't like texting yeah I don't either I feel like with like even when my boyfriend and I were like getting to know each other, it's like FaceTime or like let's hang out. Yeah. Like don't, don't give everything over text. Yeah. And like don't be I, girls are always so worried about the text or like what to reply or whatever. Like text, just keep it short and simple in mm-hmm. my opinion. Leave the conversation and all of that and like questions and follow up. Yeah. Like leave that for in person. Like you exactly. want to be mysterious and like I swear to God, guys can sense when a girl is like all up on them like or not all up on them but <laughs> all up on them but like <laughs> no all, they're putting you're putting a weird energy out there g- guys can sense when you are like fiending for them you and i when swear you, like, to god it makes them run away yeah like when one of your friends is like talking to a guy and you just like can feel their like like jitters like i feel like that's so easy to read in messages or like calls or seeing yeah. you like you're just you're giving bad bad vibes and it doesn't need to be like a big game like i mean i think i <laughs> says you <girl. laughs> like. i'm definitely like i think in the beginning you need to be like a little bit weary yeah. of like let's not answer their text 30 seconds after they send it like you know if you give find it that some fun. time if that makes you anxious like just don't even <laughs> begin because i've been but, there and it's a rabbit hole. I do think it's nice to give the guy some space. And also, mm-hmm. again, give yourself some space. Like, this is... Girls get so worried about, like, ooh, what does the guy think? Like, whatever. Do you think he's sitting there wondering what you think about him? No. no. He's taking his seventh shit of the day. <laughs> like, I promise you. Like, you're... guys and girls are just so different. So, like, yeah. you need to almost channel the mentality of a guy. You, like, are the fuck boy. <laughs> yes. Be the fuck boy. And but don't be, we're, we're not being toxic in 20 No, but not toxic, but like you just don't, I think what I'm trying to get at here is like, you need to be so good and secure with yourself. Yes. There should never be a point where you're in life and you're like, I want a boyfriend just to have a boyfriend. Yeah. Like you should be happy in your life without a boyfriend. And then I think that's when you're going to like find someone who mm-hmm. compliments you and compliments your life, but you can't go out searching for one. Like you can go on dates and like want to find someone but not in a way where you're like needing it does that make any sense yeah no because I also think if you're needing it like the wrong type of guy will sense that and take advantage of that and you'll end up in a relationship with someone that like you don't deserve just because you're like wanting someone not like a specific someone yeah and I think like make this the time for you to decide like do I like him is mm-hmm. he, is he texting me back too fast and giving me creeper vibes? Like, <laughs> yeah. I think like you need to decide this for yourself and like let it progress naturally. I think as I've matured a little bit, I think it's okay to like let them know you're interested. If you go out again, like you know, like it's okay to say those things to them, but yeah. it's just like don't be freaking crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think I like really struggled with this. Like I am so or was like really anxiously attached. And this is getting like really deep, but I saw this TikTok and it was like, if you're anxiously attached in your relationships, you're actually having an avoidant relationship with yourself. So there's like some part of you, I know, right? That thinks that like you don't deserve to be liked by your dream guy or like you don't deserve the best type of love. So you settle for something and then you try to validate it by like reaching out and being anxious about the relationship all the time. So like, again, that goes back to like dating yourself first figure out what's wrong with yourself like go to therapy (laughs) go to therapy (laughs) go to therapy (laughs) it really helps um but yeah i know i went to one therapy session she was like you have um avoid an attachment dating style and i was like huh you needed someone to tell you that (laughs) like (laughs) my friends are like uh yeah alex we've been trying to tell you but i i will say i've gotten so much better at showing affection no i'm Um, like really proud of you i think even just the way you talk about him i've never heard you talk about a guy i think it's because i actually like him yeah (laughs) i have to say i think i've like dated guys before that i just actually really yeah i mean there's definitely i've dated a guy for convenience 
mm-hmm. just because like in college like you're going out he's there I was like sure but it's <laughs> like not? I actually like I'm excited and happy so this is the first oh time God. for me showing affection like this was not ever a thing for Alex I never showed affection mm-hmm. um and even like posting him like I swear to God I would have boyfriends and never post them once like I was like I will hide you till the day I die because I didn't want to share that I had a boyfriend because I like wanted to still like see if there was other options mm-hmm. out there for me I know this is hot like toxic and horrible to say everyone <laughs> keep on moving on shush <laughs> literally shush I don't want to hear it <laughs> not that I it's in the past <laughs> um but yeah we're much better now feeling good yeah um but it's so funny because my point of this is before I started, you know, hanging out with Braxton and got to a mm-hmm. point where I was like, okay, maybe I could date this guy. I literally was saying to like our friends, I was like, I'm so happy not being with a guy right now. And mm-hmm. like, I'm so happy with myself. And it was the first time I literally ever that I felt like so content with not having a boyfriend and like yeah. not having someone to hang out with like that. And like, I don't know, like I was just like, yeah. I feel so good and secure in myself. And then he just came along and there we go. Be confident in yourself. Know your self-worth. If you're questioning it and if you're questioning if he really likes you or not. He doesn't. (laughs) Sorry. Nope. (laughs) Move on. And I think for anyone listening who's in college or just honestly at any point in life, like, I think you have to take away from the date like your connection with the person, not the actual experience because there's many different types of first dates, you know? And I think it's important to remember just honestly at any phase in life, not the actual date itself, but like the connection that you have on the date because like dates can vary and it's just like, I don't know, like maybe you're going somewhere really nice or maybe you're not, but like that stuff shouldn't matter. It should matter like what you actually like enjoyed with the person and like the conversation and the connection like my first date was at dave and buster (laughs) and yours was in a helicopter over miami like yeah (laughs) but i think that like just figure out what you want out of the date and like for me i love doing like fun activities if you're nervous going into a first date like, I think doing an activity is a good way to yeah. go to get around If you're that nervous too. about sitting at a dinner and talking to a guy... Like, I wouldn't do well at that. So, I, like, we had talked about, like, doing the whole arcade thing, and it ended up being such a fun way to break the ice. Yeah. Because you're talking about the games and not, yeah. like... If you have an activity to do, it definitely makes it a lot easier. Yeah. I love a dinner date, though, I will say. I love a dinner date once I know someone. Yeah. Because I, like, if I don't like you, I really can't fake conversation. Like, I... Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, I I feel like in college, though, I was just always so excited for, like, a dinner date because it was free dinner. (laughs) So I would say yes. That that A literal rock on the sidewalk could ask me on a date, and I would be like, (laughs) yes. Yep. (laughs) Let's go. When and where. And if you are going on a dinner date or something in general... And I mean, this is kind of, this isn't toxic advice, but if you were like really wanting to get this guy to like you, like if you know this guy, you want him for whatever reason it is. And like, you just, you want him to be interested in you. I think you can do a little bit, not too much, not too much. (laughs) Maybe you can do a little bit of pre-stalking before the date and like, see something he's like nichely interested Mm -hmm. in and like bring it up and like ask him about it or I don't know like all of a sudden if he really likes country music you're like oh my god I love country music but then (laughs) but then again you're getting into the point where it's like okay well you're like not even this isn't even someone you like you're just trying to get them to like you but don't like this is just this is just if you you need a little tip and trick if you want to go the other way (laughs) yeah I think that it can really work unless you, like, for instance, hated country music and that was going to somehow come out later in the relationship. So I had a little bit of an experience with this technique, actually. So I was with this guy in college and I really liked him and we were like sort of on the cusp of dating. Mm -hmm. And we would Snapchat and I saw this tapestry that he had hung up in like the background of all of his selfies that he was taking. Oh no. (laughs) So I took my ass to Redbubble, 
to Etsy, <laughs> to Amazon. And I was searching for this tapestry because I was like, there's two guys on it. Like, I can't make it out in the selfies. Like, you're trying to find out what... what you're we, trying like, to find out like, where he, like, bought this tapestry to find out who's on this yes, tapestry? Yeah, okay. because, like, if you like something enough to hang it up in your room, <laughs> like... I, I must I must know about yeah, it. Yes, I must know. So I finally found it. It was like a Playboy Cardi and Lil Uzi poster. Oh, God. And I, like, luckily knew some of their songs, so I didn't have to go, like, too deep into the stalker zone. Um, so I did end up bringing it up in conversation and uh, pretended that I just, like, knew off the bat where yeah. the tapestry was from when I saw it for the first time. And he was like, wow, like, <laughs> you, like, know them? Like, that's really impressive. And I'm there like, yeah. I feel like these things go, like, right over guys' heads. <laughs> if you're really, really nervous about a date and, like, you just can't get yourself to do it, I think you can, like, go on a double date. And I think this is especially for people who are, like, out of college because it's definitely different like now our friends are like actually like matching with guys on these dating apps and like going on actual dates like it's mm -hmm. not someone that you're going to be meeting at like a frat party anymore like you're literally going to meet a stranger and like which can be scary it can be and like dangerous yeah <laughs> so you could always be like let's do something like I have a girlfriend if you have someone you want to bring yeah. and go on a double date and okay. maybe <laughs> if you're setting that up Please make sure that the guys are of equal <laughs> cuteness level. <laughs> you guys, Alex screwed me freshman year. I, well, I kind of wanted to do it knowing, but I was like taking yeah. one for the team. And Hannah took one for the team freshman year yeah. with a double date because <laughs> there was this guy and he was really cool in my eyes. Like, I feel like, would you say he's famous? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I have <laughs> yeah. to go on this date. Like you are coming with me. So I agreed. I, yeah, you had to go on the date. So I, was I like, feel like okay. you also wanted to come with me though. Yeah. It was like a really cool experience. We were like, we can both so date like him. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but no, he we, wanted Alex. We <laughs> trekked on over to South beach together yeah. and we get there. <laughs> the other guy, like all praise, all love to my short Kings out there, but I am really tall. <laughs> they are just, it's not my journey. Um, this man was like 5'4", <laughs> like maybe 55 Hannah's years like 5'10". Yeah, like this was just not going to work out. Like I literally could have put him in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and we sit down and I'm like, first of all, we came over and they're sitting. So he looks even shorter. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm literally like. Oh my God. Is it too late to like walk out? But right was now? this even like a date? Like, I think we were going to like the club. Well, we were at that like place for drinks first and he yeah. worded it being like, I have a guy like bring a girl. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was okay. I yeah, mean, he also was like, not nice. <laughs> so I'm like, wait, you look bad and you have a bad personality. Like he was that's short and double angry. Homicide. That is double fucking homicide. Like, <laughs> Yeah, um, but Hannah really took one for the team there. But, I mean, like, you can do that for a girlfriend if yes. you need to. I mean, it also was, like, so funny. Like, it's such a funny... Like, yeah. another a funny story that we yeah. have in our back pocket. That's just, like, literally what were we doing there. Back wait! With the guy I went on wait, date with. I think we're sleeping on the fact that when we got there, my date, like, the person who asked me on the date, had another girl sitting there for him. So we walk into this date... The guy that I'm supposed to be seeing, I guess we'll just call him, like, Peter, okay? Peter. <laughs> There's a girl sitting next to Peter. We get there. I'm thinking this is maybe, like, one of Peter's friends. And she starts talking to me, and she's like, yeah, Peter invited me, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, I've been talking to him. And I'm like, we were both uh, like, oh. <laughs> what's going oh, on here? Okay. <laughs> and then Peter starts, like, talking to me, and this other girl starts getting mad. And I'm like, wait. I'm really confused, like, what's going on here? And maybe this is another example of this was not an actual date. And we stayed. <laughs> and, we stayed. and we stayed. We had, like, a fun night, but then we just, yeah. like, ended up going home after. We just, like, took the free drinks yeah. and the clubbing night and whatever. But, like, okay, that was not, like, an actual, like, date. No, that was date. not a date. Um, um, and I think we learned that, like, as soon as we got there. <laughs> that date didn't go so well. And if you're on a date that also doesn't go so well... I think you have to like realize that and stop mm -hmm. romanticizing maybe this person that you like made them out to be so great in your head because yeah. maybe clearly they're not if the date went horribly. 
Um, I think it depends how the date goes horribly, but dates can definitely go bad. And I have overlooked those first date red flags before and I regretted it. And I ended up dating him. <laughs> um, and let me tell you, I could have saved myself a whole year if I yeah. had just listened on the first date here. I mean, I, guys tell on themselves. Yeah. Like, if you They're just not that smart. Put your <laughs> listening ears on. They will tell on themselves on that first date. Like We went out to dinner. And I mean, in my eyes, I just felt bad. So basically, <laughs> I go out to dinner with this guy. We're in college. We get dinner. And... The check comes and I'm a stickler on this. Okay. I'm not the kind of girl that's like, let me split the check. Like I'm a firm believer. I think the guy should always pay for the date. I think then maybe if you're dating, like you can split some Mm -hmm. things here and there, or maybe you get something, he gets something, but like a first date. In the courting phase, like guys should be paying. In the first date, the guy's paying. Sorry. So the check comes. I'm obviously sitting there. twirling my straw and my drink <laughs> because I'm like I'm not blowing out my pretend, wallet like all these girls like pretending to look yeah good no pre- no I'm like just literally <laughs> sit there and look pretty that's like give them a smile and basically he goes to pull out his wallet and he's like oh man oh oh my god I do for- not want to hear those words <laughs> I forgot my card and I was like oh okay he's like oh man Mm, I forgot my card like and my mom like I had she gave me money and I forgot my my card I was like oh your mommy gave you money (laughs) okay (laughs) so then he's like I'm just gonna do apple pay he goes up to the waiter and he's like so do you guys have apple pay and the waiter says no and I mean like this has to be like the most awkward scenario ever so like he has no card they're not taking apple pay and we're just like awkwardly sitting there he's fighting with this waiter about them not taking apple pay and i'm like uh no i end up just paying for the date because i was like okay it happens like whatever not that big of a deal i feel like where the red flag in this really came in is he's like okay like i'm gonna zell you for the date (laughs) i get a zell from his mother Oh my God, I forgot about that part of it. Like not even him, like at least like fake it. At least have your mom send you the money and then you send it to me. Like his little mother zelled me as if I was like babysitting him. (laughs) Oh my God, I actually can't think of anything I just felt bad for him. So in the moment I like overlooked it, but the more overall moral of the story is not like having to do with money. It's just that he was like literally dumb as bricks. And I like wear a diaper on the date too. Like that's like genuinely (laughs) terrible. He was a sweetie, but he was really lacking brain cells. And I just seemed to not care for some reason. (laughs) My mom and dad on their first date, actually my dad genuinely forgot his wallet, which like I was talking about this with him because I remembered that story. I mean like stuff happens. Stuff does happen. But he, I was like, oh dad, do you have like any dating advice for the girls for the podcast? And he was like, literally don't date a man that forgets his wallet on the first date. (laughs) So yeah. yeah. I mean, like if it doesn't go well, recognize that, be self-aware, yep. be self-aware that the date did not go well and keep on moving on. I feel like though we're going to get the best advice for them when we can like read these what would yes. Alex do questions that you guys wrote in because... Some of y'all, <laughs> holy, you guys, go to therapy. <laughs> you guys need some help and I'm going to read different questions. We're going to go over scenarios that you guys wrote in. So welcome back to what would Alex do. We're having Hannah and Alex debrief this segment about dating what would alex do scenarios i'm a little nervous for this one all right starting off hey love the pod what would alex do if she was talking to a guy for the past month or two and all of a sudden they said that they didn't want a relationship after leading you on i don't know if i want a relationship but i was definitely thinking it would turn into something more and said some low-key crazy things (laughs) when he ended things good for the sex is good and i want to keep hooking up with him but don't know how to go about it okay first of all i think we need to recognize here that you said i don't know if i want a relationship Like, that to me was like the most important part. You, I think, are getting more wrapped up in the fact that like he told you he doesn't want to be in a relationship mm-hmm. and you're now like getting competitive with that um, because you just said you don't even know if you want one. But I think either way, if you want to keep hooking up with him, 
I mean, I think that's fine. I don't think guys are ever going to like really like yeah. deny that. But I don't think you can keep that going if you're also going to like nag this guy about dating. So I think mm-hmm. you have to just kind of assess what you want here. And I think the moral of this topic is just like, why would you want to be with a guy who doesn't want to be with you? Mm-hmm. You know? I also feel like, though, if you don't want a relationship right now or you're not even sure like if you can handle it like just go with the flow like that's how Mm -hmm. my boyfriend and I started dating like we both were just like enjoyed each other's company enjoyed hanging out and it like just like eventually turned into a relationship like Braxton and I hung out for nine months before dating because I I was like two months and not being ready to date is like that's okay yeah that's like I wouldn't put pressure on it and I think Maybe it can turn something like down the road, but like mm-hmm. if you keep putting pressure on it and like keep nagging this guy about it, he's gonna like back off yeah, and like run farther. away. So I think be chill, reach out to hang out, don't give psycho vibes. Yeah, or at least just like pretend to be chill. <laughs> just pretend. <laughs> Hide the psycho. This girl said, which is we kind of just touched on, but so I don't go on dates often. I picked a guy off of a dating app to see for a night out. He plans sushi and mini pu- mini putting, mini golfing. Okay. I pay for parking, get ready the whole nine yards. He shows up late <laughs> and talks about exes the whole time. <laughs> oh, that's such a big red flag. <laughs> Girl. Nearing the end of the dinner, he talks about gender roles with the expectation of him to pay. <laughs> Three strikes. Gaslighting me into paying for his meal. What would you do in that situation? I think me, like if I'm on this date, with this guy and one he shows up late two he's talking about his ex i probably would have just paid for the meal and left before we could have even gotten to the the yeah i think i would have paid for my meal and left yeah not his but i mean at the end of the day though if he's like whatever yeah i i think i would have just been so like mad at the fact that this guy was being such a douche that i would have just been like i'm give them the card and like leave and you have no excuse to talk to him then the issue isn't even like the paying it's more like that he was so disrespectful the whole date and then expected you to pay i think if a guy's talking about their ex too especially on a first date yeah anytime in the first like months you're hanging out with them they're still in love (laughs) one they're still in love two that's a red flag not a question but a story of a crazy first date i had Turns out the guy had been stalking my socials and got information oh. from it so that we would have so much in common. <laughs> Ruh, Ruh. Who would do that? Who would do that? <laughs> I told him I was terrible with names but really good at remembering faces and he said, you must not be so good. He knew which car I drove, which I never posted on- online. Oh, he cool. mentioned specific things about my life that no stranger would know about. He was also rude and condescending but it was so creepy Turns out he was a photographer at a club I had been at two months prior, hence the face remembering content, comment, and he found me on socials and stalked me until I had got the courage to ask me out on a date. I obviously blocked him. <gasps> what? And that's an example of taking it too far. <laughs> <laughs> so when we say stalk a guy's socials before you go on a date, don't like hunt them down for two months and like Don't follow them around <laughs> wait that's so scary no, that's really scary actually the car comment would really get me i would call 911 yeah whilst on the date what's oh, that thing well, you can that... ask for at a bar um oh an angel shot is it an, yeah an yeah angel it's shot? an angel shot i think this is just remind <laughs> excuse me <laughs> Excuse me, Justin Bieber. Um, I think this is really reminding me of a time. Um, I think this is a good reminder for girls and just something in general out there. Like when you're going on a date, first of all, especially a first date, especially if it's not a guy from your school that you guys like all know, share your location with your friends. Yeah, safety first. Update them in the bathroom. Like your friends should always have your location, know what's going Mm -hmm. on on a first date like this. Like this is just so scary because this guy knows your whole life and i'm scared not a question but i shit you not a guy pissed in the garbage on our first date couldn't hold it and peed in the literal garbage in downtown chicago (laughs) that is such an amazing story that like why would this like not bother me what i don't know if a guy like if he made it a funny joke like i feel like guys being funny is like so important to me i mean yeah i Actually, guess no a, first date no 
I mean, it depends the context. Yeah. If he's like, wait, I gotta go pee in this trash can right now. Actually, I'm, I'm thinking about it and I completely retract what I said. <laughs> that would really bother me. You're like standing there while he takes off his pants in the trash can. Yeah, no. That's really funny. Alex, I met this guy at a bar, hung out with him, got his number. He bought me a drink. We connected. He comes back to me a few moments later, accusing me of robbing him because he couldn't find his wallet. I was what? mortified because I know I would never do that. He is this huge dude with his friends yelling at me. Anyways, it was on the floor. The next day, he drives an hour in a hurricane to take me to a fancy date to apologize. I catch feelings, and then a month in, he moves out of state and says he's never returning. Oh, <laughs> Okay, first of all, the guy loses his wallet and accuses you of robbing him. <laughs> no, red, like you really, red flag. He skipped like reasonable step A, B, and C. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny, but not funny. I feel like I can relate to this one weirdly a little bit because I had a guy do something to me that was like unforgivable, like un, like not okay at all in mm -hmm. any circumstance. And he wanted to take me out on a sushi date to apologize. And I fell for it. And I went on the sushi date. And he apologized and then kept on being a psycho and being crazy. So, I mean, if they're giving you... Like, think about how long it takes for you to be psychotic in front of someone. And, like, mm -hmm. show all those layers of your onion. sexual and it wasn't at all like oh your layers God. of your onion <laughs> mm, the layers anywho of if onion. he's being psychotic on the first date he's gonna be psychotic on the fifth sixth seventh and for the rest of his life yeah oh my god wait oh my god that reminds me of the time that we were coming back from the bar and i was getting in this uber with all my friends and some of my big sky friends whatever were like helping us get home safe whatever and this random guy, he like went to our school, but none of us like really knew him or whatever. He was blackout drunk and he just like hopped in the Uber because he was like headed in the same direction. I don't even know why he was there, but he was so drunk and was getting like really aggressive and rowdy in the Uber. Like I was getting a little <laughs> scared. And then all of a sudden I'm like talking to my friend Brooke, just like turning th this way, whatever. He grabs the back <gasps> of my head and goes like this. And literally slams it down into my knee bone. And I'm like grabbing my face. I'm like, holy fuck. Like what just happened? And then all of a sudden, like all the guys jump out of the Uber and start like dragging him onto the pavement. Like, thank God they were there to like get me out of that situation. That wasn't even the craziest part. The next day, these guys like tell him what he did because uh -huh. he was completely blacked out and had no idea. And a couple hours later, we like hear this knock on my apartment door. I'm like, hello? And we open it, and it's like, there's Wasn't no one there. A bag from Chanel. Yeah, it was a Chanel bag. It was just, well, <laughs> boo, he just got me the perfume. <laughs> <laughs> a shopping bag from Chanel. I literally saw this big Chanel bag. I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, punch me in the face again. <laughs> but it was perfume and a huge bouquet of like 36 red roses. I'm like what i don't even know you first of all and that's like the weirdest thing ever but it was his like apology for but guys think me. that they can just like buy an apology yeah that's like, what i'm saying like actions, don't let someone buy your apology actions speak louder than words forgiveness well i guess that is an action so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god just don't do it just don't forgive them just if don't. they're psycho just keep on moving yeah like money should not be able to buy your forgiveness boom Boom. Even though we fall <laughs> even though we've fallen for it a few times, boom. boom. <laughs> Follow your own advice. Boom. <laughs> Maybe we should start talking to ourselves. Boom. We are. Boom. <laughs> this might be the worst podcast episode ever, or oh maybe the greatest. I think it's going really well. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Are we done? Oh my god, we I think done. we're done. Our moral of the story was in self-awareness out to Lulu. Yeah, yes. Yes. Be self-aware about yourself, about the guy you're dating, about everything. Delulu girl, 
is out. It's in not cool anymore. It's not funny anymore because you're just hurting yourself in the long run. Boom. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Love you guys. This Love was you. such a fun and hectic episode. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Love and you guys. We love you so much. Yay. I'll see you next Thursday. Bye. <laughs>